community and grow your membership through Facebook. I am Bryn Gorman, LWVMA's Membership and Community Engagement Manager. Also joining me today is my colleague, Taylor. Taylor, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I am the LWVMA Administrative and Program Associate. And we also want to thank um, Jen Mira from LWV Needham and Amy Smith from LWV Topsfield Boxford Middleton for their help with um, developing this presentation. Um, Jen and Amy are, are here with us today to assist with questions and we'll talk later about their best practices with their lead Facebook pages. And um, before we get started, I wanted to let you know that we have muted all of the participants until the question and answer period at the end of the webinar. At the end of the presentation, we will take questions from people who quote, raise their hands or have typed questions into the chat box. Okay, so let's get started. So here's a quick um, overview of our presentation today. Um, we'll go over benefits and goals, show you how to create a page, suggest tips for posting, how to create events, tag others, and much more. All things Facebook. Okay, so what are the benefits and goals of Facebook? Through Facebook, you can grow your membership, elevate your ev events, increase your engagement, and raise awareness about the good work your league is doing. And the best part is it's free to sign up. Okay, so how to create a Facebook. To get started, you'll need to designate a person from your league to create your page and have them sign up at facebook.com. Once they have an account, Follow the uh, URL provided here where you can create a free business page for your league. Next, name your page and select your business category, such as political organization. Select a profile image and a cover photo. The profile image will appear at the top left of your profile page, as well as next to your account name on all posts. Most leagues use their logo for their profile image. The cover photo acts as the header to your profile page. You can use Facebook's adjustment tool to showcase the important part of the photo. LWVUS has official logos available on their league management site. So this is a great way to obtain your profile photo. Remember to also to check out their brand standards document to ensure you're compliant with their rules. Here are examples of cover photo images used on the LWVMA Facebook page. Rectangular shape is uh, best for the cover photo, and you can also create a collage to make a rectangular shape. Under your cover photo, there is a button you can customize to direct people back to your website or donate page. So don't forget this step. Under your profile image, you can set up a username on your Facebook to help people find you quickly. This is a unique name for each account. LWVMAs is at LWVMass. In the upper right hand corner, you will find your page settings, and under page info, you can add a brief description of your league. Here you'll want to add your official league email address so people can contact you. Avoid using a personal email address or phone number. It is important to check your security settings and check your visibility settings. We recommend that you disable visitor posts on your page to ensure only designated admins can share contact content to your page. Visitors will still be able to comment on your posts. You should also add an, another colleague as a second Facebook admin or editor to help maintain your page. Under settings, choose, choose page roles, assign new page roles, and enter the email address associated with your colleague's Facebook. Selecting admin will provide them with full access or you can have them as an editor. 
the admin view of the main page will differ from the visitor view. So always keep that in mind. Now that you have your Facebook page set up, um, you are going to want to create posts. Um, you can have text posts, videos, links, photos. Um, there's a variety of different content you can share. Um, you will find um, the box to create a post under your cover photo on your Leaks Facebook page. Sorry, just a moment. There we go. Um, you can choose to share your post now, um, or you can schedule your post for later. This can be particularly useful um, if you are going to be on vacation or if there's content that you would like to share um, on a particular day. If there are multiple people with access to your league's Facebook page, it might be a good idea to have one person who has the authority to review posts before they go live. Um, so you can do this by having everyone else create drafts, um, and then the, um, the person with the posting authority can review them and publish them. The drafts will appear um, right underneath that box where you create posts and the person with the authority um, can click see draft right here and schedule it to post at a later time or publish it immediately. Um, and they also have the option to delete it if it is not appropriate content. Um, so what is appropriate content? Your Facebook posts should update your followers on your week's progress at the local, state, and national level. Um, it's a good idea to add links for photos um, so that more people will be interested in engaging with your content. You are absolutely encouraged to share links uh, from the LWBMA and LWBUS Facebook pages, and we recommend that you like both of these pages so that you can see our updates, tag us, and share our posts. Um, when you're sharing, it's best to include some introductory text to uh, let your followers know what it is that they are seeing on their timeline. There is a variety of different things that you can post. Um, so news articles quoting or citing your league or other local leagues are great. Blog posts are definitely encouraged. Any kind of official content, um, official communication from your league, such as a press release or statement, is um, a great thing to post on your Facebook page. You will also want to update photos uh, from your recent events, any other resources that you or other leagues are putting out to the public, action alerts and calls to action, uh, voter guides, town hearings, town meeting dates, candidate nights, any kind of events that you have coming up. Um, when you can, we recommend that you link to more information on your website just because it's best to keep your Facebook posts on the shorter side. Um, and of course, always uh, keep your followers notified of voter registration deadlines and reminders of election days. We recommend that you tag others um, to increase the visibility of your posts. So you can tag and mention other organizations, um, members of coalitions that you're on, or people that you are working with by liking their page and then typing in their page name with an at sign in front of it while you're drafting your post. Um, this will basically link their name to their profile so that uh, your audience can just click that link and see their page. Um, and your post may also appear on their page, so their audience will be exposed to your Facebook page as well. Um, we recommend that you like other local leagues so that you can tag them in your posts as well. And if you're posting any kind of statewide action alert, we recommend that you tag the main sponsors of the bills um, that you're promoting on the, in the House and the Senate. So these are two examples of posts that the League of Women Voters in Massachusetts used the tagging function for. So we tag the League of Women Voters of Needham over here um, so that anyone who sees this post and is interested in learning more about Needham's League can click through there. Um, and we also posted um, an article from the Boston Globe. So we tagged the Boston Globe here uh, in hopes that folks who follow them may see our post as well. And it seems like it worked because we reached quite a few people. One of the main types of content that you're going to want to post are photos. Uh, and we recommend that you choose the best. So a few high quality photos from an event are more likely to capture your audience's attention than a large album of lower quality photos. 
we recommend trying to get action shots. So your members actually engaging in activities in the community. So registering voters or engaging in any kind of advocacy activity at the state house. Um, provide context for your photos. So explain what your members are doing, why they're doing it, um, how that relates to your mission. We um, encourage you to get permission from your photo subjects and ask them if they would like to be tagged in the post. Um, and also remember to stay nonpartisan. So if you're posting a photo from candidates nights or debates, try to get everyone in those photos so that you're not just spotlighting one candidate. Now that you have content on your page, um, you're going to want to get more folks to like it. So invite your friends and fellow league members to like the page um, by clicking this um, little ellipsis here and then scrolling down to invite friends. We recommend personalizing your invitations, so include a short message telling them why you think they would be interested. You also will want to encourage your local league members to share the page on their Facebook profiles and invite their Facebook friends. And we also encourage you to include your Facebook URL in your flyers and other materials so that people who encounter your league in person can later find you online. You should also add a link to your website and electronic newsletters to your Facebook page so that you know, um, people who find you on Facebook can then find you elsewhere on the web. Once you have an audience on Facebook, you can use it to create and advertise events. So from your league's profile page, uh, you're gonna click events, oh, apologies, um, events on the left side panel and then create the event. So you'll choose an image, you'll add the event details, and then others can engage with your event by RSVPing. Um, and you should encourage your league members to do so so that it shows up on their profiles as well. And you can also um, share the event on your public profile. So um, if you do that, then your Facebook friends will see that you are attending the event and be encouraged to attend as well. Some helpful tips for posting are um, posting three to five times per week. If you are going to post more than that, particularly if you're going to post more than once a day, try to space your posts out so that folks don't see them um, all at once on their timeline. Your Facebook audience is going to be both league members and the general public, so make sure that you keep your posts accessible to someone who may not be familiar with league jargon. And if there is a Facebook group in your town with a bigger audience, share voter service and events to that page to increase um, your audience there. One important aspect of moderating a Facebook page is keeping the peace. So you want to encourage conversation, um, but also keep the tone informal and fun. So you can block commenters who are behaving in an abusive manner on your posts, but not commenters who simply disagree with the post or with other commenters. And you can apply that same rule when deciding to delete individual comments, which you can also do rather than just blocking someone entirely. Um, do not engage in any kind of argument from your league's account. Be aware when you are speaking from the LWB page versus from your own personal Facebook. And you can always reach out to LWBMA if you have any questions about moderating your Facebook page. So here are some examples of other leagues. Um, for example, Needham has a great Facebook page. Um, so let's take a quick look there. Apologies for uh, the speed of our internet. So you can see they have the LWV logo as their profile photo and then a photo of league members engaging in an activity in the community as their header image, which is great. Um, they have all of their publicly available information here. I believe they use a Google Voice phone number, so that's not someone's personal phone number, which is always recommended. Um, sorry, this is taking a moment to load. Here we can see a post where they used a hashtag um, and they also tagged the League of Women Voters of Massachusetts and League of Women Voters of the United States. And there is a photo 
and the caption here clearly explains what's happening in the photo. So this is overall a great example of what you would want to post on your Facebook page. Another league with a great Facebook page is Topsfield Oxford Middleton. So let's take a look at that as well. Okay, that may not be in the cards for us today, but that's okay. Right. So why don't we open this up for questions? Um, so if you have a question, you can raise your hand. Um, so Amy and Jen Miroff are also, Amy Smith and Jen Miroff are also available to answer questions. So they um, are, representatives of local leagues that are doing Facebook very well, in our opinion. Okay, Heather. Just a moment. Hi there, Heather. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, good. Um, so I'm from the league in Andover, North Andover, and I had to, when I set up my page, I had to go through channels because I was posting political content. Do you still have to do that? I had to like send in a copy of my license and a social security number and um, someone from Facebook sent me back um, confirmation through the mail actually. It had to come through the snail mail that I actually lived here and was a United States citizen. Interesting. Um, and I you don't set know up. If anyone else has had that issue? And you set up the page as a political organization. I don't remember. It was a while ago now, so I don't exactly remember how I went through the channels. That's interesting. Um, Heather, um, when did you uh, do this? Oh God, like a couple years ago, maybe, or last. Actually, I think it might have been last summer. Okay. Um, yeah. I can speak to that if that helps. Um, okay. I encounter this a little bit too. I am a, I'm a social media consultant. I was doing some work uh, with um, a, a PR firm that works with political um, candidates, and we and we had to do that for them because we are advocating for for politicians. Okay. I don't I don't believe I don't believe you have to do it because you're nonpartisan. Um, right. I didn't. It didn't happen to. Th to us when we set up our, our league, Top Seal Box. Okay. Um, I, must, I must have done it a different way then. I don't know. I don't remember exactly how I did it, but I remember they wouldn't let me post anything. It was your temp. I, I bet it was your template. There's a special page template. Maybe. For um, a politicians. And what's interesting about that, just so you know, if you're a politician and you use that template, that surfaces your, um, your constituent information to you from Facebook. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, and, fa and Facebook does that now because it was a, um, a problem after right, the right. election, as you can imagine. So yeah, they want to make sure that you are who you say you are. Right, exactly. Okay. Yes. So um, you don't want to register yourself as a politician or a candidate. You'd want to register as an organization. Okay. okay. I'll have to go see what I did then. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have a question in our chat box um, about boosting posts. Um, someone asked, when I post on our page, Facebook then keeps asking me to boost my post for $5 a day. Should I do that? Um, you're, you can boost posts. Um, it will certainly increase your reach. Um, you don't have to. Um, we've done it at the State League and um, noticed that we do get more likes. Um, for you know general posts if it's an important um you know event coming up or an important topic you can certainly post um boost your post but you do not have to um also there is another question in here um if let's see. 
Um, so there's a question here. Uh, so everyone knows this uh, webinar will be uh, recorded and made available on our um, website. So do not worry um, if you uh, need to take notes or whatnot. Um, we'll make sure that these slides are available. Okay, um, we have another question from Diane. She says, we are all barraged with postings. What tips do members have to get people's attention other than using a photo? Um, would Jen and Amy like to speak to that at all? This is Jen. Um, the best way that we've seen to increase um, visibility was to use hashtags and also to tag the legislators themselves. So for example, we get a lot of visibility when um, we put the lead sponsors of the bill on there and tag them, if we use the hashtag that's going on for that event. So we still get a lot of visibility around a specific event um, by following the hashtag for the day and for the legislators. Uh, this is Amy, and I would I agree with that. Tagging and hashtagging your key. Also, um, being regular with your posting. Um, you know, people, uh, after you get into a cadence, that helps keep your uh, page visible in the timelines of people who follow it. Um, so we actually have, we have a couple of questions. Um, one was uh, a follow-up to boosting posts. So Heather says, I heard that boosting is not as effective as advertising your page. Can you explain the difference? How does advertising versus boosting work? Amy, um, since this is uh, kind of your area of expertise, would you be able to help us out with the difference there? Sure. Um, ads are created. Well, I'm going to start. When you boost a post, what happens is Facebook, Facebook is looking at your um, content all the time. And it, when it sees something that's trending or like is very, getting very a lot of engagement, it will suggest um, for a mere $5 that you boost that post. Um, to bump it up a little bit. So it's taking existing content and asking you to pay them to make it um, more visible. Um, advertising is, is kind of complex and if you're, I don't recommend it unless you're really good at this. You need to use Facebook Ads Manager. Um, you have to know how to create um, your audience. Um, you know, maybe, and maybe that could be another like, I don't know, <laughs> To talk or something. Um, it's really, I, I, I find that, and for my clients, um, it's people who sell things get the most traction out of that. Um, yeah, I, I don't use it, I don't recommend it to a lot of my clients who are small businesses and nonprofits. Um, I don't think you get the bang for the buck, but you know, it's always worth, you know, and having said that, it's always worth experimenting. Try it once, see if, see if you like it. Some people are very good at this, um, you know, and, uh, but for the most part, I would not, I would recommend it. That's okay. my, 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 your mileage may vary. Thanks, Amy. Um, we also have a question from Carlin. She says, what do you think non-members want to see on a, on a LWB Facebook page? Um, in our experience, people tend to be interested in posts about particular issues that they care about. Um, we recently posted about immigration and that uh, received a lot more traffic than some of our posts say about members being at convention, for example. So a non-member, in my experience at least, is more interested in um, policy-oriented posting rather than membership-oriented posting, um, although that doesn't mean that, you know, you should do more of one or the other because, again, your audience is a mix of both members and non-members. Um, does anyone else have uh, an answer to that? Maybe Jen or Amy. Yeah, I, I would say our most, our busiest posts, our, our views are really around elections and town elections or state and local elections. So we usually get the most traction there when people are looking for voters guide info. And then I would say definitely around the advocacy events as well. Taylor, I would agree with that. Great. Thank you. We actually, when we get a lot of traction, we make we make sure you create events for your events too on Facebook. Like, don't just get, add it as a post. Um, we find when we make we create events and um, and share them out, that gets a lot of uh, attention too. Great. Uh, do we have any more questions? Oh, 
Oh, two participants had their hands raised once. Okay. Um, Karen, your hand is raised. Here we go. That. Karen? Okay, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we yes. Can. So I had a question that I tried to type in, but I made a typo and it was probably totally unreadable. So getting back to the first issue of uh, political organizations, etc. So when you first set up your page and on the screen where you showed that, you choose the type of organization you are. And one thing you can choose is political organization and LWVMA has that designation. But another one is a uh, nonprofit organization. And I think some leagues have chosen that one. And I wonder if there's any guideline on which one you should choose. Needham says non, uh, nonprofit, I think. And, and I wonder if you don't choose political, would you get less scrutiny from Facebook? No, well, the scrutiny from Facebook, this is Amy talking, um, the scrutiny from Facebook came when, when it's, I, odds are um, that issue that came up earlier was because the, the politician template was chosen. Um, I think uh, L, um, Topsfield Boxer Middleton is a political organization. We, that's how we classified it. So we haven't had any trouble at all. Um, one thing too is just so you know, is certain features are available on page, certain page templates that aren't available in others. I can't talk to right now what's the difference between like a nonprofit and um, a political organization. Uh, but you may find that you have something available to you on a, a, a nonprofit template that's not available to you. On a I, I wonder if one, I wonder if the donate button. That's that. I was thinking that donate is probably one of them. Yeah. Okay, because we do have it. We did have a donate button until Facebook changed something and we didn't do it again because we not never got a single donation through Facebook. Did you hook, did you hook up to the do Facebook donation network? Uh, I don't know. Somebody else, somebody else okay. did it. Okay, thank you, Karen. Um, we also have a couple of other hands up. So Heather, I think you are not muted. So if you would like to uh, ask your question. If you're talking to me, I didn't, I didn't raise my hand again. Okay. That's just from earlier. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Angelique, um, what is, uh, what's your question? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, my question um, is around getting um, some marketing slash Facebook social media posts from either national or from um, state level. So I work for a large um, nonprofit that's national but has local affiliates. So we get sort of direction or things that are made at a higher level that are then sent down that it's essentially like our choice whether or not to use them. Um, and I was wondering if that was something that was um, sent down through national or like maybe get sent to um, the state level um, and whether or not it sort of trickles down to us. Um, we essentially sometimes use sort of like the league leader updates and things like that to, um, you know, maybe post relevant material. Um, but I wasn't sure if there were already social media graphics and sort of plans that were um, created at a higher level. Um, hi there. Uh, so this is Taylor. There is, um, at the national level, there are logo graphics that are created for each individual local league, um, which you may want to use as your header um, or your icon, but we don't have any specific posts for the most part that we encourage local leagues to post. Um, we create most of our graphics on Canva, and you're of course welcome to you know copy them and share them if we post them but um, we're usually not sending out, at least at the state level, and as far as I know at the national level, any kind of specific you know, content that we're asking local leagues to post. Bryn, awesome. does, that, does that sound correct to you, Bryn? 
This is Jen, yeah. and I think they do, um, the LWV of US has a pretty active Twitter account. Um, so if you're on Twitter at all, uh, you know, occasionally LWV Needham will use something from the LWVS, LWV US Twitter account that's going on with like, let's say HR1, the For the People Act. So some sort of national voter registration push or something about gerrymandering or some of their um, cases for the US Supreme Court. That's some good content you could also post. That's the only thing that comes to mind right now, um, if that's helpful at all. Thanks, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Um, so we have a question from Mary from Williamstown who says, how can I view the page the way the public sees it instead of an admin view? <laughs> Good question. Uh, so Amy, uh, is that something that you could maybe help us with? Thank you. So at the, um, so at the top of the page, uh, I'm, go, I'm going into one of my, my pages, so I'm, where I'm an admin. Okay, so the top of my page, underneath the banner, there's a dot, dot, dot button. If you select that, you will see, get, you'll see an option about, the third option down is view as page visitor. Okay, that was perfect, thank you. Um, do we have any other questions? It looks like those are all of our questions. Um, of course, people are still welcome to email um, Taylor and I with any other follow-up questions. We can also connect you with Amy and Jen. Um, again, this presentation will be made available um, on our website. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll post that uh, this week. Great. Oh, and we have a final comment um, from Diane. She says, I cannot stress enough the mileage we get out of sharing to large Facebook. I believe that was meant to be sites. Oh, and we have a hand up. Sorry. Uh, Karen Manning. Um, Karen? Oh, here I am. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, great. oh, have you heard me? I was talking for about 30 seconds. You didn't hear a thing I oh, said. Oh, no, unfortunately we did not, or at least I didn't. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I was kicked out and then I had to rejoin, so I'm, I'm, I might be raising my hand at the wrong time. No, nope, uh, this is perfect. I'm saying something about mileage, and um, I'm with Newton, and we're trying to create more of a social media presence, and I had two questions. Um, one of them I can probably ask my own league members. I'm pretty new or board members. Um, is there any, is there, is there a clear line in the sand for when something is, is deemed nonpartisan? Um, because it seems like you could publish something, everything has sort of political overtones or undertones. And so I could post something about immigration, but you know, what if someone, what if that were viewed as political? Like, I think there are rules around it, but a little refresher would be really helpful. I feel like I could post with more confidence if I knew where the line in the sand was. Like I could even post something about the protests, right, on the border and it will look political as anti-Trump. So where's that line in the sand? This is um, Jen, this is Jen actually, so, um, Anything political is perfectly fine. Partisan is not. So if you were saying Trump stinks or whatever you want, that's something different. So if you're saying something about a specific candidate, that's not allowed. But policy is okay. So any legislation that we support, if you go to the LWVMA website and see all of the legislation that we support, um, that is perfectly fine. So for example, for the Lights for Liberty event, so any immigration related activity that we support at the state and national level is perfectly fine to post. So it's policy okay. is A-OK, -okay, um, political candidates not OK. So it's just about not supporting candidates. That is the line in the sand. Correct. Yes, okay. candidates, um, 
and also parties. So you also wouldn't want to say, you know, the Republican Party's actions on immigration or anything. You would want to stick to um, talking about the actual policies that we support or the policies that we oppose. Is that clear? Very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you for asking that. That's a question that we have heard a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Okay, it's good to have that, you know, visible to people on your web. Is there is that is that something you recommend publishing on the websites? That policy is that something that you have that policy on the U.S. or Massachusetts site? Just or what? Not really a policy, but that guideline is that visible to show somebody that? Um, I believe it may be in um, the local league toolkit that's on the LWBMA website, but I will have to check that uh, after we finish up and make sure. Yeah, no, it's just good to have because, I mean, things are so, things are so, vol that, well, what's the word? They're like sensitive and sort of, it's charged right now. Everything's charged. So, okay. Thank you. All okay. right. And, and the league policies are, are right out there. Like they're where they should be. And, and I think you'll be impressed with like the where we stand at the state level and the national level and so forth. So it's basically human rights for all is what the bottom line is with the state okay. and national league. Okay, great. Thanks, Thanks Karen. Sure. Okay. Do we have any additional questions or comments? Oh, Karen had a second question. I apologize. Me? Oh. No, I, I guess the other question I was going to ask, um, I'm sorry, I don't mean, I'm, like I said, being a newcomer here, you po you provided this to us and it's really helpful and it's going to help everybody get on the same page, no pun intended, and be more effective. But somebody mentioned using Twitter and I'm curious if that, I'm curious if you'll create a similar kind of, um, of webinar for Twitter or if that's something we shouldn't pursue or you don't encourage. I'm just curious where people stand on Twitter and that's all. Yeah, I mean, Twitter is great. Um, I think that's definitely something that we would consider doing if folks were interested in attending. Um, personally, I love Twitter. So yeah, I think that's something that we um, will definitely consider moving forward as folks get more comfortable using social media for their local communications. Great, thank you. Thanks, Karen. Also, also, National has developed um, a guidelines for Twitter um, on their league management site, so you can find that there as well. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. So it looks like that's it. Um, we will post um, these slides and also the recording of the webinar on our website so you can always refer back to them. Thank you so much to everyone who attended and to our lovely panelists, Amy and Jen, um, for providing their expertise to us. All right, thank you all very much. Thank you all.